أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ووضع الكتاب فترى المجرمين مشفقين مما فيه ويقولون يا ويلتنا ما لهذا الكتاب لا يغادر صغيرة ولا كبيرة إلا أحصاها ووجدوا ما عملوا حاضرا ولا يظلم ربك أحدا وإذ قلنا للملائكة اسجدوا لآدم فسجدوا إلا إبليس كان من الجن ففسق عن أمر ربي أفتتخذونه وذريته أولياء من دوني وهم لكم عدو بئس للظالمين بدلا ما أشهدتهم خلق السماوات والأرض ولا خلق أنفسهم وما كنت متخذ المضلين عضدا ويوم يقول نادوا شركائي الذين زعمتم فدعوهم فلم يستجيبوا لهم وجعلنا بينهم موبقا ورأى المجرمون النار فظنوا أنهم مواقعوها ولم يجدوا عنها مصرفا صدق الله العظيم ووضع الكتاب فترى المجرمين مشفقين مما فيه and the book will be placed so you will see the criminals fearful of its contents ويقولون يا ويلتنا and they will say who to us what type of book is this لا يغادر صغيرة ولا كبيرة إلا أحصاها it does not leave any minor or major thing without having it recorded in it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَوَجَدُوا مَا عَمِلُوا حَاضِرًا They will find all that they have done placed before them. وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا And your Lord does not do wrong or injustice to anyone. In this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is informing us of what people would be going through at the time of the Day of Judgment. On that day, when all the people will be standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will see that the books of the records in which all of our deeds have been recorded will be placed before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as we will see, all of these books are placed before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all the people will start getting very fearful because of what is in the, in those books. As we will know our record and each and every person will know what type of record he or she has, what things we performed and did in this life. All of these things will be recorded in those books and they will be presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that that will be a very difficult time for those who have done wrong. فَتَرَى الْمُجْرِمِينَ مُشْفِقِينَ مِمَّا فِي You will see the criminals are fearful of the contents of that book. What is the contents of the books? Nothing other than what we have been dictating to the angels. We are dictating to these angels what to write. And these angels are only writing what we are saying and what we are doing. It says in the narrations that once Sayyidina Sulaiman asked one of the jinns, 
What is the most surprising thing you have seen in your life? The jinn said, The most surprising thing I have seen is when I see how fast human beings are dictating to the angels and how fast the angels are writing all of what human beings are saying and doing. This is the most surprising thing that I have seen in my life. We are dictating things very fast. At some moments, we are dictating things through our eyes, through our ears, through our mouth, our tongue, our hands, all at the same time. All of these parts of the body are busy doing something at the same time. And angels are writing all of those. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَتَرَ الْمُجْرِمِينَ مُشْفِقِينَ مِمَّا فِي You will see the criminals. And when I go through the word mujrimin in Quran, it really scares that if we think of our souls being in the list of criminals in this life, and everyone looks at us as a criminal, that this person is a criminal. In the records of the government, we are considered criminals. In the eyes of our own people, our friends, our relatives, we are considered criminals. This is how everyone views us. This is how people look at us. What would be the situation of that person? In this life, we can't live that way. But really, Allah subhanahu, it's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessing that on the screen where people see us, He didn't give them that view. The view in which they can see us as criminals. When you have a computer screen, you are able to see different type of views over there. And there are some type of views in which you can view the document with all the signs of enter, if you entered, you have a backspace, anything, any spaces or any key that you have pressed, you will see the signs of those, it will reveal everything that was behind the screen and we were not able to see it in normal view screen. But this will be the view that will be shown in Akhirah. Right now, all of these things are hidden. We are hitting a lot of keys right now that people are not able to see. That view have been hidden. But this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying on that day. That will be the view on which people will, that the people will be able to see on the screen. And this is how people will be able to view us and our lives on the Day of Judgment. That all of these hidden keys that we have pressed in this life, with our eyes, with our mouth, with our hands, with our tongues, by hearing, by saying, by doing, all of these things will be viewed over there. And once the person himself and herself will see that screen, will look at that screen by him and herself about him and her, about our own deeds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the person will be saying, Yahweh latana, now woo to us. We are destroyed. There is no way now for me to make it to Jannah. Up to now, this person was not viewing that screen. Although, at this time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of His rahmah and mercy, did not allow others to view that screen, but we know what we do. We know what kind of people we are. And still, we are trying to prove to even ourselves, not only to others, even to ourselves, that we are great people. Sa'id bin Jubayr rahimahullah was asked, that who is a great virtuous man? He said, a person 
who after doing all the good deeds, when he remembers his sins, looks down at himself. That is the right view that we have to look at ourselves through. On the Day of Judgment, all of these things will be revealed and will be presented in that book. وَيَقُولُونَ يَا وَيْلَتَنَا مَا لِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ لَا يُغَادِرُ صَغِيرَةً وَلَا كَبِيرَةً إِلَّا أَحْصَاهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks in other ayahs of Al-Quran Al-Kareem about presenting these books to people. So first thing, these books, as we learn from the ayah, they will be presented before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then, each person will have his book and her book in his own hand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about that says in Quran al-Kareem فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ فَيَقُولُ هَا أُمُقْرَأُ كِتَابِيَهِ Those who will be given their records in their right hand they will say to people هَا أُمْ here, take, take it, see. اقرأوا كتابية, read my book. إِنِّي ظَنَنْتُ أَنِّي مُلَاقٍ حِسَابِيَ I thought I will have a difficult judgment. Allah says, because of having the book in the right hand, He will know now, Allah made it easy for me. فَهُوَ فِي عِيشَةِ الرَّاضِيَةِ He will have a pleasant life. فِي جَنَّةٍ عَالِيَةِ He will be in that high jannah. On the other hand, As far as those who will be given their records in their left hand. And may Allah protect us from being of those. Those who will be given their record in their left hand. And their hadith tell us, and even there are ayahs of the Quran that indicate to that, uh, to that to this point that they won't be just given the record in their hand like this. Their hands will be twisted behind their backs. Just like in a fight, a wrestler tries to grab the other person's hand and twist it behind his back. And the more he's going to pull it up, the more pain that person is going to have. Angels are going to be holding the people, the criminals in that situation. And this is how they will be pulling their hands. That here, take your book from your back. Try to grab your book. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another ayah, وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ وَرَاءَ ظَهْرِهِ For those who will be given their books from behind their back. This is where they will have to grab their book. So, they will be given their books in the left hand behind their back. وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِشِمَالِ فَيَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أُوْتَ كِتَابِيَ He will say, I wish I would have never been given this book. يَا لَيْتَهَا كَانَتِ الْقَاضِيَةِ I wish the death would have been the final destination and I would never come back to life. مَا أَغْنَى عَنِّي مَالِيَ My wealth is of no help to me. مَا أَغْنَى عَنِّي مَالِيَ هَلَكَ عَنِّي سُلْطَانِيَ All of my power has gone away from me today and I'm standing here helpless having to take my book with my left hand in this manner from my back, from behind my back. So this is how the books will be presented to people. As the books are pre presented to these people and all of us will be given our books Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, These will be such books that not a single deed will be missing from these books. Not a single thing for people performed in their lives will be missing from the book. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ Whoever will do an autumn of good, will see it. وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَهُ And whoever will do an autumn of evil will see it. And not only this, 
it may be a surprising point when we ponder into this ayah of Quran al-Kareem where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يعزب عنه مثقال ذرة في السماوات ولا في الأرض Nothing is hidden from Allah even as minor and as minute as an autumn and whether that thing is in the heaven or on the earth. Who was going to perform any deed in those deeds in the skies and the heaven? But still Allah is covering the deeds that are performed in the skies and the heaven also. Whether you do it in the skies or you do it in the, uh, in, on the earth. And nowadays, we find people go up in the skies and they are doing a lot of those things. For which they are going to be accountable. And not only this, it's good for us too. That insha'Allah, when we are in the sky and we do the good deeds, we are getting that reward also from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are not being lost. But the thing is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as He covers the skies and the heaven and this ayah, at the same time He tells us, not only an, uh, equals to an, uh, anything equivalent to an autumn, He says, وَلَا أَصْغَرَ مِنْ ذَلِكَ وَلَا أَكْبَرَ and nothing smaller than autumn or major than that that will not be recorded in these books illa fi kitab mubin all of it will be recorded in those days people could never think there could be anything smaller than an autumn but allah is still covering if there is anything that people will want and find out it's smaller than an autumn allah says even that thing will be recorded in these deeds in these books Now, having these things recorded in the books doesn't mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish all the people for each and every deed that is recorded over there. Because when the person have asked Allah's forgiveness, that thing is also written over there. That these things, the person asked forgiveness for these deeds and was forgiven for them. As once Umar radiallahu anhu asked Ka'b al-Ahbar rahimahullah about the hisab and the day of judgment Ka'b al-Ahbar said there will be people who will be given their record full of sins and Allah will make them grow, go through their records then the person will be given another piece of paper with the records of good deeds Comparing this, these records, the person would think that I'm going towards hellfire. But at the end of the record, there will be a line that will say that all the sins are forgiven and the person is granted the Jannah. Ka'b al-Ahbar said that will be the person who would go around and say to people, Ha umuqra'u kitabi, here read my record, I'm going to Jannah. He wants people to read that last line, everything is forgiven, he is going to Jannah. This is the Rahmah of Allah. So it's not that we will be punished for all of these minor and minute things. Yes, we should not look down upon these. That's the main point. That don't think these sins are minor, I can continue committing them. Always consider it a sin. And consider yourself a criminal after doing these. That in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is a case against me now. Ya Allah, please forgive me. I know once I'm presented before you, there is a case against me that I have done this. No matter how minute it is, I have done it. If you won't forgive me, I will be accountable for it and I will be punished for it. So that should be, this is the feeling that Allah wants us to have. Is not the feeling of fear that, oh, you are destroyed, you are done, you are going to Jahannam, no matter what, Billah. no, that's not the feeling. The point is, all of these things are there. Oh, human being, just know who you are and what you are supposed to do. Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, rahimahullah, have narrated in his Musnad, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said 
Iyakum wa muhaqqirat al-dhunub Always refrain from minor sins. And he used the word muhaqqirat, not just sagair. Haqir, haqir means something humiliated, that every person looks down upon it. He says, refrain, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us, advising us, refrain from those type of sins, that people look down at those. Don't consider them any important, give, don't give them any importance. Oh, what, so what, if I have done this, so what? You know, it's so minor, I, it's not a major thing I have done in my life. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives us an example of it. فَإِنَّمَا مَثَلُ مُحَقِّرَاتِ الذُّنُوبِ مَثَلُ قَوْمٍ نَزَلُوا بِبَطْنِ وَادٍ He says the example of these minor sins and the sins that people consider don't give, don't look uh, or don't have any uh, understanding of how severe they could be they consider them very minor and they just keep on committing those sins. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says these are just like a group of people got, were traveling and they stationed in the middle of a valley. They wanted to prepare some food. All the people went around to look for some wood but they could not find pieces of wood through which that they can burn and use it as a fuel to have, to put on the fire. But all of these people came back with small pieces of wood. When they came back, they started putting these small pieces and having little fire, little after little, and they keep on throwing these small pieces of wood, and they are collecting the small pieces and burning that, putting them into that fire, until their food was ready. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, these small sins, minor sins, are the same way that you keep on adding one after another and they can create a big fire. One of the poets give a beautiful example of this. It's just an example. He says, that I lost fire. I did not have any fire to prepare any meal. And it was too cold, so I needed some fire. So I went and asked Malik, the keeper of the Jahannam, for some fire. I said, I need some fire. He said, there is no fire here. You go and commit sins and that will create it. You create your own. I don't have anything here. This is exactly what it is. We create our own. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in another hadith which is in At-Targhib wa Targhib by Imam Mundhiri rahimahullah. He was advising his wife Aisha radiyallahu anha, Umm al-Mu'mineen. Ya Aisha, Iyaki wa muhaqqarat al Aisha, always refrain from these minor sins. Why? Fa'inna laha min Allahi taliba. Allah will question you about those also. And once Allah will question about any of these, no matter how minor it is, are we going to say, Ya Allah, I disobeyed you because it was very minor? The scholars have said, one of the definitions of major sin is, when a person considers, considers that sin a minor, it becomes major. Any sin that we consider it very minor, it becomes a major sin. Because simply you are telling Allah, that Ya Allah, I don't have that, that much importance for you. I can disobey you for these things. This is why a poet says, Refrain from all kind of sins, whether they are major or minor ones. This is what taqwa means. وَصْنَعَ كَمَاشٍ فَوْقَ أَرْضِ الشَّوْكِ يَحْذَرُ مَا يَرَى be like a person who is walking on a thorny route. He is very careful at each step of his life. لا تحقرن, لا تحقرن Don't look down on a, upon a uh, sin, any minor sin. فَإِنَّ الْجِبَالَ مِنَ الْحَصَى Mountains are made out of small pebbles. 
This is what the minor sins would do. And this is what people will be saying. Ya waylatana mali hadha al-kitab. La yughadiru sagheeratan wala kabeeratan illa ahsaha. What type of book is this? It covers every, it has recorded every minor and major thing that we have done in our life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَوَجَدُوا مَا عَمِلُوا حَاضِرًا Whatever they have done, they found it over there. I have not added anything over there. وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا Your Lord does not do wrong to people. He is not going to add things in the records that they have not committed. They have not done. Allah does not do wrong. In fact, subhanallah, his rahmah is such that he says, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us in the hadith that when a human being performs a good deed, he gets ten times the reward of that deed. And when he commits a sin, he gets the sin of only one sin. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in another hadith showing us the rahmah of Allah that there is no zulm over there. There is no Injustice over there. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, إِنَّ الْعَبْدَ إِذَا هَمَّ بِحَسَنَةٍ فَلَمْ يَعْمَلْهَا كُتِبَتْ لَهُ حَسَنَةٍ When a person thinks of doing a good deed, and he does not perform that good deed, he gets one reward just for thinking of doing it. And if he would perform the good deed, he will get ten times the reward. And when a person thinks of committing a sin, does not get a sin. When he decides of doing it and then he does it also, the time he would do the sin, then he will get only one sin for it. This is the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا I'm not going to do wrong to any person. All you would find over there what you have been dictating to these angels and they are writing what you are doing and what you are saying. We are dictating all of that. They will find in front of them everything that they have done. Some scholars, some of us say that we will find the reward of our deeds, good deeds, and the sins for the evil deeds. But when we look at the ayahs of Al-Quran Al-Kareem, the other opinion of the Mufassirin seems to be stronger. The ones that say that it's not that we only will see the reward of the deeds, or we will see how many sins it will be recorded that you got 30,000 sins, 40,000 sins. It won't be only that. All of our deeds are getting recorded. How? Nowadays, these video cameras and these different type of cameras that can capture the image and actions and everything have made it very simple and easy for us to understand. That how record, how deeds can be recorded and captured and pre pre be presented to people. This is what you have done. You can see it yourself. <coughs> So Allah is using the word وَوَجَدُوا مَا عَمِلُوا Whatever they have done, they will find it present in front of them. There was a time when they also used to object that with all of these records, if it is writing and angels are continuously writing and writing and writing, where are they keeping so many books? They must be having a lot of books to keep. They need a lot of file cabinets. But of course, now we see these small computer chips made it very easy for us to understand that if human beings can invent things like this, that a small chip can carry the whole library. Imagine what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can have and would have. These things really make us, because of the weakness of our iman, subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us these type of things that make this Believing these things, understanding these things, very easy for us. And you look at all the other things where people used to object in the past. Nowadays, forget about how Allah is doing it. Human beings are able to do things that are like that. 
And of course, what Allah is doing is much greater than that and beyond our understanding. So in case we come across something that we cannot explain it to our souls, although there might be explanation to it, at least, this is the least I have to say, that we cannot explain it to our souls, we need to realize that even if I cannot understand this at this time, of course, is not beyond the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With our inventions, human beings using, using their minds, they came up with so many things. Before, to have so many lectures and Quran, audio tapes of Quran, a person had to have large space and rooms and libraries full of these tapes. Nowadays, you record all of these things in the computers, in the hard drive, and that small hard drive can have hundreds of lectures and so many copies of Al-Quran Al-Kareem and different recitations and different Qurra and people reciting it so slowly and people reciting in different tones and ways and all of this is recorded exactly the way have they have recited it and we have, it's only one click and you have everything available for you. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us how things will be available and they will be presented to us on the day of judgment. On the day of judgment, our deeds, as we will see our deeds, we will also see the real picture of these deeds also. Sometimes the real picture is different than what you just see in the mirror. In the mirror, you may be able to see some, the image smaller or bigger. The mirror may be giving you different image. But in reality, the thing is little different than what you are able to see in the mirror. On the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show us the reality of the deeds that we are performing in these lives. These deeds, each deed that we are performing has certain reality that is hidden behind it. A child holding to a box of a match, he doesn't know that there is fire in it. He can't see no fire in that. And he's playing with it. You tell him, you know, this is fire, don't play, it's going to, you're going to burn yourself. He says, no, no, there is no fire here. See, I'm holding it in my hand. And you hit the match there and you show him, see, there is fire there. You're going to burn yourself, you can't play with this. He's holding that box of match and he's standing by the stove and the gaze is going on. The stove is on. Now the child, you tell him, you know, this is very dangerous. He says, you know, dad, I can touch that this gas also. It doesn't hurt me. He can't see the reality. We have experienced it. We have seen it. The deeds that we perform in our lives, they have these type of realities that are hidden from us at this time. Who is showing us? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is showing us these realities by telling us, don't do this, because this is what this is. You think it's something different, you see it different, but the reality is little different than what you see. It. For example, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran al-Kareem, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَأْكُلُونَ أَمْوَالَ الْيَتَامَ ظُلْمَ Those who consume the wealth of orphans, إِنَّمَا يَأْكُلُونَ فِي بُطُونِهِمْ نَارَ Those who are using up their wealth, the wealth of orphans, they are consuming the fire in their stomachs. Now this will be the reality of it on the Day of Judgment. It will come in the form of, food, uh, of fire. Here, the person is, sees it in the form of food, in the form of dollars, in the form of gold and silver. On the Day of Judgment, the very same wealth will come in the form of fire. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a person who does not pay the zakah, on the Day of Judgment, he will have a snake around his neck, biting him throughout his body, and will say to him, Ana maluk. Ana kanzuk, I'm your wealth, I'm your treasure. It's the very same gold, it's the very same money, 
that the person thought it's gold. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us, you see it as a gold, it's not a gold, it's a snake. A sahabiya came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She's wearing some bangles made out of gold. He asked her, do you pay the zakah for it? She said, no, ya Rasulullah, I don't know anything what zakah is all about. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, these are flames of the hellfire. She took it out right away and threw it away. She saw the reality as soon as she was shown that reality by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She was able to see it. A sahabi wearing a golden ring. In the beginning of Islam, it was allowed. Later on, it became forbidden. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he saw that ring in the hand of that sahabi, the sahabi didn't know that it's forbidden now. He is sitting in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with that golden ring. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw that ring in its real form, which means he saw it as a flame of a fire in this person's hand. He can't take it, his rahmatul lil alameen. We will not allow any person to be holding a fire. You will try to just throw it away on his, out of his hand. You can't allow that person to burn himself. You can't allow people to kill, kill themselves. So, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw it in that real form. A man wearing this gold, he held that person's hand, pulled the ring out and threw it away. People who can't see the reality, they will object. Why does he have to be reacting in this manner? He can tell him nicely. He can't. You can't wait. You can't tell the person, brother, this is a flame of a fire in your hand. By that time, he's burned. This is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is seeing. The reality of it. He throws it away. Then he went to his home. The gathering is over. The other sahaba said to him, pick it up. Go and sell it or give it to your wife. He said, no, no, no. Not after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam threw it away. He sees the reality behind it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith, a person whose dress is going below his ankle, you see it in the form of clothes, in a form of a paint, in a form of these uh Shirts or whatever we are wearing going long below the ankle. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, This is not clothes. This is a flame of a hellfire. When that thing is touching you, it should remind you that this is how the hellfire is going to burn that, piece, that, pad, that, that, that portion of your body. He's showing us the realities behind these things. Only if we see it. This is the reality of the deeds. So, وَوَجَدُوا مَا عَمِلُوا People will find what they have done in their real form. They will see the reality of these things. They will see the real form of these things. وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا Allah does not do wrong to people. It's only people that are doing this to themselves. It reminds me of another hadith. Which is about Mi'raj. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that when I was taken there, I saw a person whose stomach was full of snakes and scorpions. The stomach was as big as a room. And you could see through his stomach that all the snakes and scorpions are in his stomach and they're biting him inside. That person is shouting and crying. I asked Jibreel, Jibreel, who is this person? And who, who are these people? There were many of those. Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam replied, Ha'ulai akalatul riba. These are the people who used to take interest and use interest. A person laying down and the angel cuts his mouth standing, is standing from his lips on the right hand side, cuts the whole cheek goes up to his ear. The person is shouting and crying. Then the angel goes to the other side, to the left hand side, and he starts cutting the left hand side the same way, starting from the opening of the mouth, 
cutting his cheek, going all the way up to his ear. By that time, the right side is fixed and he cuts the right side now. And he keeps on doing that. I asked Jibreel alayhi salam, who, who is this person? He said, this is a person who was of a habit of lying and he used to lie such a lot that people all around the world will take his lie and will just keep on saying the same thing, repeating the same wrong message. This is the reality of those words that we utter. These are realities. This is why scholars have said, An-Nasuniyam. People are sleeping. They will wake up the time they will get into their graves. Then they will be able to see all of these realities. وَوَجَدُوا مَا عَمِلُوا حَاضِرًا They will find everything present before them, whatever they have done. وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا And your Lord does not do wrong to people. وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمَ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنِّ فَفَسَقَ عَنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّهِ أَفَتَتَّخِذُونَهُ وَذُرِّيَّتَهُ أَوْلِيَاءَ مِنْ دُونِي وَهُمْ لَكُمْ عَدُوا بِئْسَ لِلظَّالِمِينَ بَدَلًا And remember the time we said to angels prostrate before Adam alayhi salatu wassalam فَسَجَدُوا They all prostrated except Iblis. كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنِّ He was one of the jinns. فَفَسَقَ عَنْ أَمِّ رَبِّهِ And he disobeyed the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَفَتَتَّخِذُونَهُ وَذُرِّيَّتَهُ أَوْلِيَاءَ مِنْ دُونِي Allah is asking us a question. Will you then take him and his offspring as helpers rather than me while they are your enemies? بِئْسَ لِلظَّالِمِينَ بَدَلًا what an evil substitute he is for the wrongdoers. The story of Sayyidina Adam alayhi salatu wassalam of his creation and then angels getting the order of sujood and, and Iblis rejecting to perform that sajda has been repeated many times in the Quran al karim But all of this repetition does not mean that Allah is only repeating the same story again and again with the same message. No. Each time the story is repeated for a different purpose and with a different message. This is the beauty of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not repeating these stories as part of the history and is not mentioning any of these stories as just part of the history of human beings. And the beginning of the world, he's mentioning these stories for us to get lessons from them. What is the purpose of mentioning this story at this place? You find different details of the story at different portions and different surahs of Al-Quran al karim Over here, you don't find too many details of the story. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we ask the angels to do the sayyidah, فَسَيْدَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ All of them did the sayyidah except Iblis, he was of the jinn, and he refused to fulfill the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the only portion of the story that is mentioned over here. Why? For what reason this portion is mentioned here? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned prior to this story of Iblis, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about the leaders of Quraysh approaching Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and demanding that Ya Muhammad, we are willing to come and sit with you and listen to you under the condition that you will ask these poor people that are sitting always around you to leave you at that gathering when we come. If they are sitting there, we are not going to sit with them. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam thought that these people won't mind it. And it will be helpful to these kuffar to come and listen to me. At least I will have an opportunity of teaching them. 
So he was thinking of doing that and he received the ayah of Quran al-Kareem وَلَا تَطْرُضِ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِيمِ We talked about that ayah. Don't force these people out of your gathering, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The ones who are praying to the Lord day and night, yuriduna wajha, looking for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after that story, is telling us this one, that listen, shaitan, iblis, refused to do sajda for Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. What was the reason for refusing to do that sajda? He said, Ana khayrum min. I'm better than him because I'm created out of fire. My original is better. My origin is better than the origin of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. Because I'm created out of fire. And Adam alayhi salatu wasalam is created out of dust. Fire is better than dust. Why did he disobey Allah? Why did he refuse to do sajda for Adam alayhi salatu wasalam? Looking at his background, at his origin. And then he became so arrogant of himself that because of my origin, because of my background, I'm greater than Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. So I'm not going to do the sajda for Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the kuffar of Quraysh and thus of course to every person who may have similar type of feelings towards the poor people around him and towards the people who are according to our understanding considered to be of a lower grade people, low class people and we don't like to sit with them, we don't like to be with them, we don't like to eat with them, we don't like to accompany them, we like to be in the cars of uh, Wealthy people, of people who are considered to be high class people, we like to be in those people's homes and around those people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, this is what the kuffar of Quraysh also thought, that because of our origin, we are higher people, so we are not going to sit with these low class people. They were repeating the same mistake that Iblis have done it at the time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him to perform that sajda. He was looking at his origin, at his background, and because of that, he thought he's better. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't look at those things, and don't think that you are better. Number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning this story as a reminder to us that, oh human beings, look, you are taking Iblis as your friend. You must be ashamed of yourself. The one who made your grandfather, your father, Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, make a mistake. And he tried to mislead Adam alayhi salam. And he made him go through all of those hardships at that time by making him eat of the tree. And the one who has so much grudge against you that he refused to bow down before your father, you are taking the very same person as your friend. You must be ashamed of yourself. Number three, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that in this life you will have to choose one of the two friends. Either you take Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a friend or you take Iblis as a friend. You can't have both. And you will never have neither. If you are disobeying Allah, Iblis is your friend. You're obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are connecting yourself to Allah and having the animosity with Iblis. One of the two things we will have to choose in this life. This is why Allah says, Are you still going to choose him and his offspring as your friends and leaving without, without choosing me as your friend? Number four. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us that all human beings when you turn away from your Lord when you don't listen to your Lord when you don't obey your Lord you make real major uh, major mistakes in your life a type of mistake that in normal situation a normal person will not make these mistakes but when you go away from Allah you don't listen to Allah 
And unfortunately, many times, we don't even get time to listen to Allah. How many times do we get opportunity to listen to the Quran, try to understand the message of Quran, go through the wordings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When we don't listen to Allah, when people go away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we get used to reading all the newspapers, listening to all the news from all around the world, sitting on the internet and scrolling through that internet for hours to get all the information and all the news, but nothing from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us then human beings make real major mistakes. And he's giving, giving us an example of that mistake. That you choose your worst enemy to be your best friend. These are the type of mistakes we, st we start making the time we go away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we don't listen to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't want to change the topic and go away from it. We have to continue with these ayahs. But the point that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning here by using the word Would you choose him and his offspring as friends beside me? Other than me? It tells us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is really reminding us of a great fact that we normally forget. And that is, although we keep on cursing at shaitan, but still, when it comes to following, many of the times we find that we are following shaitan. When it comes to the practical life, when it comes in, in beliefs, we say, no, no, I, that's our worst enemy. Practically, through our deeds and actions, we find ourselves doing things that please, that pleases Iblis. And unfortunately, because of the very same fact that Allah have mentioned here, not obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not having the habit of listening to Allah, we find the ummah at large is making major mistakes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the ayahs of Al-Quran Al-Kareem talks so openly about the natures of other nations. Not just about their histories, about their nature. We don't go by those ayahs of Al-Quran Al-Kareem, we go by their false promises. So, Quran really reveals the facts. Are you still going to take him and his offspring as friends? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the word dhurriyah here. That his offspring. To tell us that, uh, that shaitan has children also. And there are hadith also that indicate to the very same fact. That shaitan has children because he's one of the jinns. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it very clearly in this ayah. He was of the jinns. So he disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And jinns are created out of fire. You created me out of fire. And Allah says about jinn in Quran al kareem in Surah Al-Rahman. وَالْجَانَّ خَلَقْنَاهُ مِنْ قَبْلُ مِنْ نَارِ السَّمُومِ No, it's not in Surah Al-Rahman. وَالْجَانَّ خَلَقْنَاهُ مِنْ قَبْلُ مِنْ نَارِ السَّمُومِ And in Surah Al-Rahman it says, وَخَلَقَ الْجَانَّ مِنْ مَارِ جِمْ مِنْ نَارِ Created the jinn from the flames of the fires. From burning fire. So, and Iblis is created of the fire. So Iblis is of the jinns, is not of the angels. Angels are created out of noor, out of light. They never disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shayateen, that is obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now, if jinn, if uh, Iblis was of the jinn, then how come Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I ordered the angels to perform the sajda, but Iblis refused, he is not of the angels anyway. So how come he refused then, and why Allah is saying that he refused? He is not of the angels, he is of the jinns. Iblis, as the Tafasir talk about him, his name was Azazil. 
and he had done so much ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Imam Ibn Kathir narrates that there isn't a single spot on the surface of the earth where he had not performed sajda for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just. He does not do wrong to people. He knew what Iblis will do in future. But because at this time he's doing good deeds and he's trying so hard, he made him, he put him with a group of the angels. And he made him the leader of certain group of angels. So he was chosen to be the leader of that group of the angels. So now he's always with them. And whenever angels are receiving any order, he's considered to be part of them because he's always with them. In fact, he's a leader of one of those groups. So when now when they receive the order, simply the order goes to him also. Because he is with them and he's considered to be one of them at that time. And because of that, he even forgot his own reality. And now he started having jealousy against with all of this ibadah. He's still having jealousy against Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. He wants to see himself to be better than everyone else. Subhanallah. Look at this. Remember? All of these things in the life that we get, that we acquire in this life, these are the knife with two edges that are sharp from both sides. You can use them on either side. You can use it for having some benefit out of it and you can use the other, the, the other side and you can kill people with it and you can harm people with it. Anything that makes people great. At the time of doing those things and acquiring these things, the person really has to humble himself to the furthest extreme the person can go to. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he admires Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasalam is taken, taken to Mi'raj. What a great honor. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not say subhan alladhi asra bi rasulihi or bi nabihi. He said subhan alladhi asra bi abdihi. Glory to Allah who took his servant. When he became the real servant, he humbled himself for Allah. He went to Taif and he was beaten up over there. He, in Makkah Mukarramah, people are torturing him. They're accusing him of all kinds of things. He humbled himself for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him to that status. Alm, ibadah, wealth, all of these things, whether, even if it is the alm of deen, knowing the tafsir, knowing the hadith, all kind of alm. Alm is something that makes people great. Ibadah is something that make people feel great about themselves in those things. Wealth is something that makes people feel great of themselves. At the time of acquiring any of these things, the person really has to work very hard on himself, to humble himself, make sure and keep realizing at all times, it's only a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Initially when I started the Imam after graduating, I had a very difficult experience with this. I was a student before that. I'm respecting my teachers, doing everything for my teacher. All of a sudden here I become a man. Now people, someone opens the door for me, someone takes the slippers and put it there for me and these type of things. So I wrote a letter to my teacher. I said to him, this is becoming very difficult for me. How I control my nafs? People are giving me all kind of respect and calling me with all kind of titles, good titles, Imam, Sheikh, and this and that. So he wrote me back. He says, you are making a mistake. They are not respecting you. They are respecting the knowledge that they think you have in you. The respect is not to this body. The respect is not to this name. The respect, because these people love thee. These people have respect for Allah and for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the thing we have acquired the knowledge that Allah has sent down. And we have acquired the knowledge of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So for because of the respect they have for the deen, they respect the people that think they have the deen in them. And this is the reality. It's not as. 
It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave us this and who gave us that knowledge of deen. And people are respecting that deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the, the thing we have. So, this is the, these are the facts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us through these ayahs or through this story of Iblis by mentioning it in this portion. Imam Sha'bi rahmahullah says that once a person approached me with a question that does Iblis have children? So he said at that time I did not have this ayah in my mind so I just I didn't want to answer yes or no so I said to him I wasn't present at his wedding so I don't know if he got married or not. <laughs> then he said later on I remembered this ayah wa dhurriyyatahu awliya min duni, and I said to that person yes yes he, he has children because Allah you say is that he has children zurriyya. and of course we know that jinn they get married they have children and the only exception with Iblis is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him a long life a life that will be there till the day of judgment once someone said that Isa alayhi salatu wasalam has to be better than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Why? Because Isa alayhi salam is still alive. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam have died. So I asked the person, does long life means better? Yeah, of course. Who's better now? He has a longer life than anyone else. He was there from before Adam alayhi salam and will live till he will see the last person in the world. He has a long life. So that doesn't make him any better than anyone else. The thing that will make people better by obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by attaching ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, realizing that we are the real servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He's our master. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to understand these ayahs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow the message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us through these ayahs and be able to put these ayahs into our practice. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين أسكو في الصلاة
there you can say about, yes, yeah, you can say that children, they are going to death. Uh, I don't remember all, right, I don't remember all six of them. The question is today in Jum'ah we talked about Sayyidina bin Sa'id bin Jubair rahmahullah, that he was one of the six people who finished Quran in one raka'ah in, inside the Kaaba. There were six people who did this. So who are the other five? I know three people. I don't remember the other three. Osman radiallahu anhu is one of them. Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah is another one of them, so these are three. I don't know the other three. Imam Ghazali rahimahullah have mentioned all of these. Tabe. He was a Tabe. No, he was, he was a slave, captive of a war. Yes, initially he was a slave, captive of war, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with that ilm and taqwa and amal, that he became the master and the leader of the ummah. That is the same one, Sa'id bin Jubair. Sa'id bin al-Musayyib, that's different. That's another stabbing. He's a tabi. So, and there, inshallah, as we are these days, we are going through the list of tabi'een in our Jum'ah sessions, and you will find that many of these great ones that we, the ummah is benefiting from their knowledge, and the, we always mention their names and read their names in the book of Tafasir, Ahadith, and you can't read any book of Sahah or Tafasir without having their uh, names in the chain of narrators and reading things on their authority. And many of these were for in the, in the uh, level of Tabi'een. Most of these greatest scholars were slaves that were the captives of war initially. Either they were the captives of war themselves or their parents. And then these children grew in the houses of Sahaba and this is what they became. Which means where there is comparison, I don't remember that. You should have to, when you come next time, bring the book and stuff. There is a hadith that talks about that, but it talks about traveling early morning. So it says that traveling early morning is the best time for studying the journey. So, but I don't remember anything like that. I just Right. Yes, this is this is it, it is in the uh, the past year that Samiri, and there is a poem in Arabic language that says, "Wamusa." Uh, Samiri's real name was Musa. Also, "Wamusa al-ladhi rabbahu Fir'aun mursalu." "Wamusa al-ladhi rabbahu Jibril kafiru." Samiri was raised by. Jibreel al Islam because they were of the same age and at that time Pharaoh, Pharaoh was killing or killing all the children, all the boys. So his mother, out of the fear that he might kill him, so she went and put him in one of the caves in the mountain. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assigned Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam to go and give him some food every day. And this is how he was raised in that cave. And then as he grew up he came down and he joined Musa alayhi salatu was salam. This is why he was able to recognize Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam. 
because he was raised by Jibreel alayhi salam. He used to come to him. He used to see him every time. So he was he recognized Jibreel alayhi salat salam. So when Jibreel alayhi salam came to Musa alayhi salam in one of these occasions, he picked up the dust from under the feet of the uh, horse of Jibreel alayhi salat salam because he knew he was. So he picked up that dust from under the feet of the uh, horse of Jibreel alayhi salam. When he made that calf out of gold. He threw that dust on the calf, and this is how the calf started making that noise. The story is no. What happened is Samiri, when he made the calf out of gold for Bani Israel. After making it, of course, we know Quran says that the calf was making that noise like a calf, like a cow. So, and that was, this is what misled those people that, oh, if this calf out of gold makes a noise and has a life, so this must be God. How did that calf start making that noise and having uh, movements and things like that that will show that he has life? That was through the dust that Samari threw on that calf. And that dust was from under the feet of the horse of Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam. Under the shoes of the horse of Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam. He had picked that dust from there and threw it on that camp. Samiri is the one who made that camp. When Musa alayhi salatu wasalam went on the mountain, he went to get them the Torah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, come and spend 40 days on this mountain. You have to do it at for 40 days. Now, 30 days initially and then made 40 days for him. They had to do at the calf there. So he did at the calf on the mountain of food. In his absence, there was a person over there whose name was Samiri. He said to these people that, oh, Musa alayhi salam got lost somewhere. He's not coming back. And what we need to do is give me all the gold and silver that you have. Because these people had borrowed jewelry from the Egyptians in Egypt. The followers of Pharaoh, Pharaoh, they had bought the, their ornaments, their gold and silver for a wedding. And then they had to leave and they still had these things that they bought from them. So, Samari said, it's haram for you to keep this gold and silver. You have to bring it there back here. So, they, he collected all of that. He gathered all of that. Look, he's thinking he's very virtuous that he's saying it's haram for you to keep this gold and silver. So, he collected all of that. He made a cap out of it. Then he had some dust that he collected from under the feet of the uh, shoes of, uh, of, of, of the horse of Musa Ali, of Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam. He threw that dust on the calf and the calf started making that noise. And he said to the people that, Hada ilahu kum wa ilahu Musa fanasi. This is your Lord and the Lord of Musa. Musa forgot and went somewhere else. No, this, uh, this, this man was raised in a cave, in, in a, in a cave and Jibreel alayhi salam used to bring him the food every day. But then later on, this man became an unbeliever. Exactly. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing that it can happen. Musa alayhi salam raised in the castle of Pharaoh and becomes a prophet. And that person at the very same time is being raised by Jibreel alayhi salam and becoming a kafir. Willingness of accepting the Hidayah is very important. This is the point there. Willingness of accepting the Hidayah. Samiri wasn't willing to accept the Hidayah. He became a kafir in spite of being raised by the Dina alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam had that willingness of accepting the orders of Allah. In spite of being raised by the Lord. So, and many, and this is really what we find many times. When we find ourselves going in the wrong direction, is a willingness of a person of doing this or that. If a person many times we find people that they are raised in a totally different atmosphere, away from deen and everything, they have a willingness to accept the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You find that person getting so great and virtuous and into deen. And another person who may have knowledge and everything but has no willingness of following the orders of Allah falls off the track. This is what, 
this is what Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu used to say that follow Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhi wa because Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhi and he used to say follow the ones that have passed away look at their lives and follow them because you know that they died with Iman. This Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday will be the 13th, 14th, and the 15th of the month for those who like to fast a Yam al -Bid. There is a great reward for us. A person, as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told us, fasting three days every month is just like fasting the whole life. You get the reward. On the day of judgment, the person will be presented as he, as he has fasted for the whole life. So, uh, this is the virtue for us. Uh, so, 13th, 14th, and 15th uh, will be. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of this week. اللهم صل على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ونبينا محمد وبارك وسلم. اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار. اللهم ربنا وربنا اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار اللهم اجرنا من النار اللهم اجرنا من خزي الدنيا وعذاب الآخرة اللهم قنا عذابك يوم تجمع عبادك اللهم قنا عذاب القبر وقنا عذاب الفقر وقنا فتنة المسيح الدجال اللهم ادخلنا الجنة بغير حساب وتوفنا مع الصالحين غير خزايا ولا نداما ولا مفتونين اللهم أعزنا ولا تذلنا اللهم ارحمنا وارفعنا بالقرآن العظيم اللهم ارحمنا وارفعنا بالقرآن العظيم اللهم اجعله لنا إماما ونورا وهدى ورحمة اللهم ذكرنا منه ما نسينا وعلمنا منه ما جهلنا وارزقنا تلاوته آناء الليل وأطراف النهار على الوجه الذي يرضيك عنا اللهم اجعلنا ممن يحل حلاله ويحرم حرامه اللهم اجعلنا ممن يحل حلاله ويحرم حرامه ويعمل بمحكمه ويؤمن بمتشابهه ويتلوه حق تلاوته اللهم ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتب علينا انك انت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله تبارك وتعالى على خير خلقه سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين رحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين آمين